Chapter six, Skunk Lunch. Can it spray yet? Danny asked. No, Mom answered. Soon you'll be able to, but when skunks are babies, they can't spray as strongly as the adults. Bat realized that he didn't know a lot about skunks. He knew they sprayed a stinky smell to protect themselves, and he knew that they were mammals, and he knew that they were omnivores because they ate bugs and smaller animals and plants too. But he didn't know very much more than that. He decided to learn everything about skunks. What are we going to feed him? Bat asked. Can I do it? He's too little to eat yet, so we need to feed him his formula. They don't drink, they don't make skunk formula, so we have to use puppy formula. It's the closest thing to mother skunk milk. Janny stood up. It's a cute skunk, Mom, but I want to go over to Ezra's house, okay? Okay, Mom said. Be back in an hour. Okay. Ezra lived three houses up the block and had been Janny's best friend since before Bat was even born. Janny loved Ezra. She thought he was funny and smart and creative. Bat didn't love Ezra. He thought Ezra was loud and annoying and a mean tease. Sometimes when Janny went to play at Ezra's house, it bothered Bat that he wasn't invited and that there wasn't a house that he was invited to visit where Janny didn't go. But right now, he didn't care about Ezra or about anything other than feeding the baby skunk kit. Goodbye, he said to Janny without taking his eyes off of the baby skunk's tiny face. The skunk was yawning and licking his lips with the world's tiniest little pink tongue. Janny left, Mom said. Okay, Bat, sit right here and I'll go get the formula. She went to her bag and pulled out a can, like a soda can, but with a picture of a puppy on it. Mom shook it, cracked it open, and dipped a syringe inside, pulling the plunger up. Bat watched it fill with a thick, white liquid. We only give him a few drops at a time, Mom said, carrying the full syringe back over to the table. Watch me do it first. She took the skunk and arranged him on her lap. One hand was over his back and under his front legs to hold him upright. The other hand was aiming the syringe full of formula into his mouth. The skunk seemed to know what was about to happen and twitched his little pink nose back and forth eagerly. Mom slowly pushed down the plunger and Bat watched a thick white droplet of puppy formula push through the hole at the end of the syringe. The skunk tipped back his chin and opened his mouth looking eagerly at it. What a good little boy, Mom cooned. Pressing more formula into his mouth. I want to feed him. Let me feed him. I want to feed him, Bat said. Okay, okay. Mom handed Skunk back to Bat. He tried to hold the skunk the way that Mom had, and then took the syringe with his other hand. Very slowly, Mom warned him. And finally, it was Bat's turn. As slowly as he could, he pressed down on the plunger, aiming the syringe tip at the baby skunk's mouth, and it worked. The skunk's little pink tongue lapped at the formula. Droplets gathered at the corners of his mouth, and some ran down his chin onto the towel, but most of it made it right into the baby skunk's mouth. I'm doing it, Bat whispered. I'm feeding him. This is the little tiny baby skunk being fed. You sure are, Mom said. Bat knew he was doing a messier job of it than Mom had done, but the baby skunk didn't seem to mind. I love him, Bat said. He hadn't meant to say it out loud. Mom laughed. Careful, or you might make me jealous, she said. But it's true, Bat said, I love him. Mom said they'd have to hand the kit over to the rescue center in a month. But Bat, holding the tiny animal in his arms, made a silent promise that he'd figure out a way to keep him.